welcome. Thanks for being here. And hope the most of us are jumping on on you. We did lesson one last time, and uh, I promised that I would start this time by asking if you had any questions. And then, um, then we'll take your questions, and then we'll let up. So, um, why don't we just, we just go around the room with a couple new faces that not everybody might know? So, uh, you want to introduce yourself going around for us? Yes. The pastor, you're sounding all garbled. Okay, I will. Um, my computer is up, and I will switch the sound to that once it's on. And we'll put that together, okay? Okay, sounds good. Trying to get affiliated with uh, churches around the ground area, but I've been getting multiple visits from pastors, so I'm here. This is probably my third, fourth visit now. Yeah, something like that. And I'm glad to be here. Awesome. And he's the one that was on the one of them on the screen last week. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm Jeremy James. Um, I'm from Chicago. Um, put it back up and join us again so good and then that was Bob he'll be he'll be back in in a second um, and let's see okay Kat can you hear us okay now it's better that's a lot better great good. all right well let's start with prayer thank you for giving us this chance to bless us and your Holy Spirit that uh, we may grow to understand you and how you work even better so we can appreciate your love for us and show that love to others. In the name we pray it. Amen. All right, so any questions that you came up with during the course of the week to place up the past year? Jeremy, you shaking your head? Yeah, I have, I have one. I understand that I was just that you do this. Okay. Uh, I guess it falls in line with this coming chapter two. Okay. Yesterday, I mean, not yesterday, but uh, last service you said, therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I've forgiven you all your sins in the name of Jesus Christ. And then, and then, of course, today that was repeated. Uh, I just personally am not used to hearing uh, the pastor say, I forgive you mm -hmm. for all of your sins. I'm just looking for context. Definitely. Sure, absolutely. Great question. Yeah, that is, that is something that sometimes um, catches our attention a little bit because we're not used to hearing that. So 
Jesus died to pay for all of our sins, right? I mean, that's like you said, we'll be getting into that a little bit in, in the next lesson. Um, and the reason that we are forgiven is because those sins are paid for because Jesus had paid for them and he says, whoever believes in him has that gift of forgiveness, right? That, that our sins are taken from us, put on him, and his perfection is placed on our record. Um, and then God gives to us believers the privilege to proclaim his message. And he wants us to proclaim it boldly, um, where he, you know, there's actually in chapter nine, so this is a really good preview. In chapter nine, it's all about forgiveness. Um, the title of the chapter, I think, is The Keys. You know, as Jesus talks about the keys of heaven that he gives to us. Um, and so I'll give you kind of a, a shorter answer here, but knowing that uh, in chapter nine, we'll get into this in a lot more detail. Uh, yeah, he, he gives us his authority to declare each other forgiven. And he says it's as, it's as valid and certain in heaven um, as if, uh, you know, Jesus is, is the one saying it. Uh, because he gives us his word to use and his word has power. So it's nothing in me. It's not because, you know, the person saying it is anything special. It's because God's word has power. Um, so it's not, hey, because I'm a pastor, I can do this. No, all believers can do this. Uh, we can declare those sins forgiven to uh, comfort the heart and mind of each other, right? As, as you know, I sin and, and boy, I feel bad about that. And that, that eats at us, right? Uh, and so God says, I want you to know how much I love you. I want you to know that your sins are forgiven. And so he gives us that privilege. So that's why, that's one of the reasons we put that right at the beginning of every service where, you know, when you think about it, when we come into God's house, we're coming into his presence, right? He says, we're two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I with them. Our jaws should drop at that, right? I mean, the um, the Isaiah passage uh, from the, the first reading this morning was when Isaiah saw the throne room of God and the angels were singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. And I said, the, 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 the hem of his robe filled the temple, you know, just this, this massive God is holy. That should absolutely destroy us, right? We're sinners. They're, they're, but um, when we go to his house and realize, hey, I am not holy. I've got a problem. That's why right away we start with, this is God's solution to the problem. God, I'm going to be honest. You know, like the Bible says, if, if we uh, claim to be with us, then we're deceiving ourselves. God, I'm going to be honest. I have not been perfect. I need your forgiveness. And then, then whoever's up front, you know, really anyone could do it, but uh, um, the congregation has called me to lead the services, right? And so as a call, uh, a, a servant of Christ and by his authority, again, not by my authority, not because I studied it, not, not because I, whatever, but by his authority, I get to declare all of your sins forgiven. And so I do, I forgive you all your sins. And, you know, and that's... Um, but is there a contextual difference between saying, I forgive you all your sins, Unless they were sent directly towards you, as opposed to so that is that is a great question, which which is one that we will get into in, in chapter nine when we talk about the um, so let let's say I, I do I call Terrell a name and I'm, I'm I do something that I shouldn't do Terrell or I, I you know hit his car or whatever um, I'm not going to try to do that I'll try to be nice Terrell but. Uh, um, what is Terrell as a Christian? What's his responsibility to me in that? To to wait until I say I'm sorry. No, just to forget. To forget, right? Because uh, if if not, um, if, if he doesn't forgive, who does it hurt? Yeah. Him. So there we're talking about that person to person. You know, I wronged you. You wronged. But really, every sin of ours is against God. Not only did I sin against Terrell, I would never I did, but I also sinned against God. And so we're talking about two different relationships. So, um, you know, when, when we, there is no one that I shouldn't forgive their sins, even if, even if they're not sorry. Because if I don't, it's just hurting me. God wants me to be showing that love. You know, he tells the stories about, about you know, love and forgiveness. If, if, if we forgive our, um, you know, if, if we want forgiveness from God, and then we're going to give forgiveness to someone else. We, we owe God a whole lot more than anyone else owes me, right? And, and so that's just that general principle that we don't have the right to hold that against someone. 
Um, that's between them and God. So now God also says he uses us, uh, you know, in 2 Peter, it talks about how we are a, a, a chosen nation, a holy people, a people belonging to God, that we may declare the praise of him. You know, we're, we're a loyal priesthood, he says. Um, and so we have that privilege to represent him to others. You think of the picture of, and we'll talk about this in the lesson 11, but the body of Christ, right, the church. He says it's the body of Christ. It's the way that people see what God looks like, right? When Jesus was here, people could look at him and interact with him and see this is what God looks like, right? He is perfect love. He is perfect justice. He is perfect everything. Um, but then he ascended and he said, now you are my witnesses. And he calls the church the body of Christ so that they can see what um, he, and so that, and, and he gives us the privilege to speak for him. You know, we're his witnesses, we're his ambassadors, he calls us in another place. He gives us the right to speak for him. So, um, so yeah, that's that's why we use that first person, because each Christian has has that privilege of proclaiming God's forgiveness to someone. Um, and, yeah. So when, so when you speak to the congregation, the nine, mm -hmm. you're really speaking out of the sentence. Nine. Speaking as God, that you forgive them because you're not God or Christ, right? So, and though you represent, representing and being is not the same thing. So, I kind of struggled with that too when he read it and when I heard it last. But I was waiting for me, I've come to that it's about that I, I say, I forgive you, you know, in your place, right? In my mind, it's really saying that. You forgive, but you're not God. Right. And so, but you accept so, and that and responsibility, but our relationship with God is our own. Right? So yes. So, I'm forgiven by God, by Christ. Yep. And you're accepting of me as less than, because that's what we are. We're never going to be good enough, kind of thing. Except that's why Christ is here, right? So, yeah, so there's another one of the, um, the ways that it's phrased in some of the services uh, is hear the words of Christ through his called servants. I forgive you all your sins. So, like, when, when so I'm speaking as Christ. Uh, yes, but yeah. Not claiming, but I'm not claiming to be Christ. Right, right, right. It's not my call. It's it's not. It's right. So, like, when, when uh, during the scripture reading sections, um, and I'm... I'm reading what scripture says i'm saying the words but it's you know i'm reading god's words and it's he's speaking in first person right so um it does kind of come across when you say i like you who are you right. and that bothered me so i almost called you and just okay like, talk with you and you would have been first at all but i mean that's how much i was like it's it all yeah. I don't know. It's just it's a lot different if you never grown up in Right. And, and part of the reason that it's phrased like that is to kind of catch us. Because it's really easy to slide into um, less certainty. Right? Satan always wants us to be less certain because the more certain we are, I mean, that's faith, right? And, and whoever has faith has eternal life. And, and, and so the temptation is always to, uh, to make it to, to take away some of that certainty. And so if I say, hey, you know, God's forgiven all of your sins, it's really easy, or I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but it, it might be easier for someone to say, okay, yeah, I know God's forgiven sins, but mine, you know, I've got this really bad one, or I've got, you know, whatever. Um, and so just to say, okay, this is God speaking to you. I'm quoting God right now. Uh, I forgive you all your sins. You know, so you're hearing God, you know, that's part of the reason for the role, right? It's, it's uh, covering me as a person, and okay, this person is uh, it, it has the responsibility of speaking God's word right now, and so I should listen to that as that again. Not because that's why I cover it because it's nothing about boy, I'm good enough to do this because I'm not. You know, I uh, I stand in awe of the fact that God uses us, and like like Paul, who said, even though I am worse, uh, the uh, less than the least of God's people this grace was given me to proclaim this, um, you know, that we don't deserve it, but 
God uses us. And we'll dig into that a whole lot more in Lesson 9 and in Lesson 11 when we talk about the church a little bit. Uh, but does that kind of... Well, your rogue example yeah. breaks could have led with that and and like, ah, that makes Okay. Sense. Because that really, that, that's a better... I'm a visual learner, so okay. that's a better way for me to understand it's not as sharp as right. powers right. that all sins are given through as sharp. You know what I mean? Right. That's a bit yeah. easier. Sound more capital. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and I mean you can see certain tenets where where the church has had some awareness. But for me, the, the road thing was a very okay. visual. Yeah. And we'll get into some things like, in, especially in lesson two, uh, that deal with okay, you know, yeah, there's some similarities in worship style and whatever else, but okay, but here's here's where the message is is a little different um, based on what God says, not based on what a church leader or anything like that says. Can I, can I tell you something real quick? Sure. When you were talking about in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you, you never said anything, you never brought it up like it. But when I was sitting at your corner, the last, last uh, thing, I, I just glanced down and, and it was the Bible was on Luke chapter one, and all I read was, uh, was the part where he came to Zacharias and said, My name is Gabriel. Because he was saying, how are you going to give us a job? Blah, blah, blah. I'm old. My wife, she's up in her ears. How are you going to give us a child? I just glanced down and just only read the words. My name is Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And for some reason, when I read that, I stand in the presence of God. He hit me with that ton of weight that you're talking about. Okay. She didn't yeah, yeah. Okay. That awe. Oh, so you never said nothing, but man, my eyes started watering up. And I was okay. Like, I was about to start playing. All right. <laughs> but it was it was because of that verse of church referencing, and, you know, that it hit me harder than me. Good, good. Sometimes it takes some time. And I learned to wait and press stuff down like that. She would say, my questions need to answer. Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of taken back by that person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yep. But now I feel like it gives me a greater hope of acceptance in the church because I'm one of those that say like, if you only knew, you'd run screaming. Right. You know? Right. And I, I carry that and I'm tired of it. Yeah. And, and God does not. So yeah. I don't feel like I'm going to unburden myself in the future if when I come clean as I'm in my head, right? Yep. That now you don't want anything to do with me. Right. Right, and there's nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's not fear of being rejected. Sure. The I when you say I, it feels like the pastor is also accepting. Okay. And then, okay. Well, yeah, and that's the beautiful thing. God does know, and he, He's not running from. He's running to us, right? And and reaching out to us. So, good, great questions. Uh, so, those that weren't here last week kind of got a little uh, summary of some of the things we talked about in in answering those questions. We had gotten right to the end of lesson one, and there was just that last passage that we hadn't read um, about the, the glory of Jesus. So in lesson one, we talked about who God is uh, and looked at the uh, some of the attributes, uh, so many of them very different from what we're used to, right? He's holy, he's eternal, he, he's spirit. Uh, we talked about the triune God. And then there's that passage there that I asked you guys to read, just highlighting um, Jesus as true God. And I think a lot of times we think of the second person of the Trinity, the, the Son of God. We think of him as, you know, eight pounds, six pounds, tiny little baby Jesus, uh, you know, the, that, that we talk about at Christmas. And then, and yeah, we think about him as the guy who died on the cross. And that's good, right? Because he, he came to earth, he took flesh so that he could die for us and pay for our sins. But, but he's more than that. Right, it's not just um, while he was here on Earth, but for all eternity, he is true God, and that that's what that passage was. Where um, in Revelation, the Apostle John got to see a glimpse of heaven, and he saw Jesus. I mean, you, you look at those uh, those descriptions, um, you know, 
feet like bronze glowing in a furnace, his voice like the sound of rushing water, just this massive power. Um, and, and John falls at his feet as though dead there in verse uh, um, 17. And then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. You know, when, when we're intimidated in God's presence, he puts his hand on our shoulder and, and says, it's me. Um, and yeah, and I forgive you. I'm the one who, uh, I'm the one who died and rose. Uh, so that was, that was the end of lesson one. Lesson two, let's roll into that. Um, where we get uh, talking about sin and grace. And uh, again, I'll give a reminder, it's your questions that are going to make this, this interesting because we, we want to learn, we want to grow. And as we're talking about things, if, if a question pops up in your head, please ask it because it's going to be helpful for everybody. Uh, so we start, uh, Sin and Grace, this lesson actually grew. So I, I don't plan on getting all the way through to the end of it. We'll probably get about halfway um, because we had some good questions at the beginning. Uh, this lesson actually grew because the same question came up every time. So we used to start by talking about uh, the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve being tempted and falling into sin. We'll read that. Um, and, and the question always came up, well, where did, where did Satan come from? Um, you know, if he's tempting them, where, how did that happen? Well, the Bible gives us that answer. And so I put some passages on here to help answer that question before we get into it. So we're going to start by talking about angels. So I've got, I've got two True or false question, just going to introduce this lesson to see where we're at on our understanding of angels. For the first one, true or false, angels are people who died and went to heaven and now take care of their living family. False. Okay. Yeah, true, we got false. I mean, it must be, it's a good question, right? The, the, uh, the, um, there's a lot out there about angels, right? Uh, it's one of the things that the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about, right? I mean, there's a lot of questions that we might have about angels, and people have stepped in to try to fill in answers. Um, now, if you if you watch the movies, if you listen to Hollywood, I think we'd say, true, that's how it works, right? Uh, when, what was uh, the, that old movie, the old Christmas movie, uh, when the um, when the bell rings, the angel gets his own angel. Yeah, wonderful life, that's it. Um, you know, uh, that's been kind of the way that it's been portrayed a lot, that, you know, someone dies and then they get their wings and they're an angel. But when the Bible talks about angels, it describes them as a separate type of creature, right? You know, humans are human, and, and God promises us, you know, a, a physical glorified body and each day he comes back and takes us to be with him, and we'll talk more about that in, in lesson 11. Um, but, uh, but the angels were created as angels, and they're described in a very different way. Um, and actually, they're servants for us. Uh, so we don't get downgraded when we get to heaven. You know, it's, it's, uh, um, so the angels are, are there uh, as a wonderful gift for us. So uh, second question, true or false, angels can take various forms. Where are these questions? They are, they're, they're just my introduction. Yep. Is this something that you guys wrote, or is this training from Luke? So this is um, a class, a Bible information class that I adapted like two other ones and, and made, so I probably should give. I see a lot of stuff that's got at the bottom that says it comes from somewhere, like in the, in the uh, Wednesday class. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this is yeah, from from Northwestern Publishing House. Right, yeah, this isn't from Northwestern Publishing House. But, uh, um, so where I vickered. He was using one that I took part of that, that he had written, and then uh, there was another one, a friend, written, and I kind of took some of the good parts, and, and uh, yep. So, what, what version was it? King James or the NIV? So, what's in this is the NIV, and it's actually, I haven't updated yet, it's the 84 translation. Uh, so, in 2011, the NIV came up with an updated translation. So, um, as far as Bible translations, there are a lot of great ones out there. Right. Uh, if if you have one that you're comfortable with and you like, great, use it. Um, and if you want to bring you know that Bible with you here and, and look them up, that is awesome. And if there's ever any questions about translating, that's why that's why uh, we have to all the pastors in our synod have to learn Hebrew and Greek. You know, we get what 
six years of, well, yeah, six years of Hebrew, eight years of Greek, um, by the time it's done to be able to go and, and look, okay, what, why is this translation saying this? Why? Because language changes, right? You know, sometimes, and that's one of the reasons that, like, for this, where a lot of times there's some, some people that might not have been in the Bible for a while in this class, um, to put in all the these and vowels and, and use language that's a little more difficult to understand. That's why I use the NIV, just because I think it's a little easier to, to understand. Um, well, I'll explain this. Yeah, yeah. explain you. Yeah. Uh, King James, I grew up with King James, and, and it's beautiful. And, you know, some of the, like some of the passages, when we get down to 16, the, the King James way is going through my head. But, um, but it's, it's it's all good. It helps us uh, um, dig into the word. So, yeah. Second question again. Angels can take various forms. True or false? True. Got some truths? Yeah, so think about it. Um, when uh, Isaiah saw those angels in heaven, right? They're, they're you know, filled with fire and flames. And there, there's uh, uh, angels are described as, as having, you know, the wings. And they're flying and they're covering their faces and whatever else. Uh, but then there's also examples of, like, uh, in the Old Testament, when these those angels visited uh, uh, Abraham and Sodom and Gomorrah, and they looked like gods, right? Uh, same thing at the Ascension, you know, two men dressed in white. Um, so they, they we're going to read a passage where it says that they're spirits, right? So they don't have a physical form, but God allows them to take forms when he wants them to interact with us in a way that we can see. You know they're constantly interacting with us that we don't we don't see. Um, every once in a while, you know something will uh, happen. You say, "Okay, that wasn't natural." Uh, you know, uh, get, and and God talks about that. So let's look at some passages on the angels. Uh, and I do the player pass method. Um, I just go around the table. If if you want to read, uh, great. If you'd rather pass it to the next person, that's great too. Um, different people learn in different ways. Sometimes it's. Uh, I, to hear someone else sometimes some people learn well by, by reading so uh Charel, if you want that uh exodus 20 passage you want to play or pass on that I'll play. all right exodus 20 and 11 for in six days the lord made the heavens and the earth the sea and all of the all of that is in them but he rests on the seventh day therefore the lord blessed the sabbath day and made it holy. okay um, so you see in the outline there, it says God created angels, one, during the first six days of creation. And then we put that passage down. Yet, angels aren't named. Why did I put that passage down? Angels what? Aren't named in that passage, right? But I think they're there. Do you see them there? Just yeah, everything in the heavens and earth, right? So uh, they're, they're part of everything. And, and yeah, God, God made it. Um, in Colossians 1, it, it specifically lists that, right? For by him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, right? So, so all of it. Uh, so God made it. Um, he made the angels as perfect beings. Jeremy, you want uh, Genesis 131? Sure. God saw that all that he had made, God saw all that he had made, and it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Yeah, when God got done creating, it says he looked at everything, very good. The, the, the Hebrew word there has, you know, that, that's that, that perfection, that, that holiness. Um, so he created, when he created them, they were perfect. Uh, he created them as spirits. Bob, you want Hebrews 1.14? So he finished in five days or six days. It doesn't matter. Well, so that's that's actually so because you know there's even more in the sixth day. He finished his six days. Um, Hebrew story time um, often will say something and then go back and explain it a little bit more. And and if you're not used to that, sometimes it throws people off. So like in Genesis one, he talks about how God created the heavens and the earth, and he created the um, you know on, on this day he created that, and you know, on the fifth day. Uh, you know the, the birds and the and the fish on the sixth day the animals and the humans and on the seventh day he rested and then Genesis two he says okay this is how he created Adam and Eve oh wait I thought he already created them um, but here the the way they will tell a history 
is they give the overview and then they step back a little bit. So um, when it says in six days he created them, uh, or I'm sorry, and there was evening, there was morning, the sixth day, he's he's summarizing the whole thing. That's the end of, that. the, end of the day. Yeah, he looks at it and says it's good. Uh, Hebrews 1 14. Yeah. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Okay, so they're they're spirits. They, they don't have that that physical body, but they can take them uh, to take physical forms. Uh, he created them as powerful, innumerable servants of God and His people. So I'll just kind of skim some of these passages here. So the the Psalm one hundred three, um, praising the Lord, and then He's telling the angels to praise the Lord, you mighty ones. Who do his bidding, right? So the angels do what God tells them to do, um, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants, who do his will. Uh, so they're, they're ones who do what God say. In Revelation, you get that, uh, um, again, John getting the glimpse of heaven, and he sees these angels, and he, he says, I, I heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands, 10,000 times 10,000. Um, the, in, Greek, the largest number you can put in one word is 10,000. After that, it's multiplication. So it's, you know, 20, 10,000 or whatever. So when he's saying 10,000 times 10,000, it's kind of like us saying, you know, billions and trillions, right? So this, this huge number that, that we're looking at. Um, so a lot of them. We already read the Hebrews passage, right? They're ministering spirits. But notice who they're serving. Those who inherit salvation, us, right? They're there to serve us. They do what God says, and what does He tell them to do? Serve us. You want to uh, read Psalm ninety-one, eleven? Yes. For He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Okay. True or false? We have guardian angels. True. True. Says it right there, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, it, notice it doesn't say whether each person has their own individual guardian angel or if each of us have 10,000, yes, some of us might feel we need more than one, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Or maybe they play zone and, you know, they're, they are that powerful. Um, but, yeah, guardian angels is a real thing. God takes care of us through those angels. Um, so God created the angels six days. Um, sometime in there, it doesn't say what specific day, but, uh, uh, and then the next thing we hear about is um, one of the angels is attacking God's creation of, of Adam and Eve, right? Uh, so what happened? Uh, we talk about the devil being a, a fallen angel. Um, can I read you on 2 Peter 2? Where God did not spare angels when they sent them to hell, putting them into the buildings to be held for judgment. Okay, so when the angels sinned, he condemned them. Uh, he didn't say, okay, I'm going to give you another chance. He said, that's it. Those who rebel. And, and, and this is one of those places where we don't have a lot of details of what exactly happened. You know, in the Bible, God tells us he gives us what we need for salvation. He doesn't say he gives us every answer we could ever ask. But that gives us something to look forward to in heaven, right? We get to ask God our questions and find out what exactly happened. Um, but, so... Uh, there, there are some passages, like in Jude, it talks about how um, uh, Satan didn't want to keep his position of authority. Uh, so it almost sounds like, you know, he didn't want to have to listen to God. He wanted to be in charge. And so he brought others with him. They rebelled. God says, no. Nope. Uh, and so they're, they're bound. Uh, and yet God allowed them to uh, roam the earth and, and tempt his people. Uh, We'll think of that in a second more. But let's let's first get a description of the devil. John 8 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Okay, so Jesus speaking to some people who were um, really attacking him, fighting against him, and he says, You're, you're following the devil. Uh, and notice the devil's a liar. Uh, that's just what he does. Uh, and First Peter five uses the picture. Uh, and he says, "Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour." Uh, that uh, 
if there were a lion in the middle of this room uh, and it was big and strong and roaring, I'm guessing none of us would want to hang around in this room very much longer, right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, we'd get as far away as possible. But then you think of that picture, how often do we look at the things that come from the devil, right? The temptations and say, well, you know, I can get this close, but as long as I don't go over the line, that's going to be okay. No, Pastor, we should be, we should be running away. Right, and so you say, okay, when, when uh, the devil approaches Eve and starts talking, it should have been, no, no, uh, this is, and, and, you know, you'll see that she does resist a little bit, uh, but we'll talk about the devil's temptation there. So, so the devil's fallen angel, um, I'm the hunter company, uh, and, and the devil tempted Adam and Eve to sin by breaking God's law. First uh, John 3, um, Lynette, you want to read that, just kind of a definition of sin? And when the sin is the law, that sin is lawlessness. Yeah. Um, lawlessness. Yeah. So God makes a law, sin is breaking it. So in, in the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam and Eve everything, right? He gave them uh, the, the animals and the trees and the fruits and the beauty. And, you know, they were, they talked about how they would walk with him in the cool of the day. And, you know, the, this beautiful relationship they had with him. He had made everything for them and said, this is yours. You take care of it. Um, beautiful thing. But he said, I'm giving you one command. Don't eat from this one tree. Um, you ever wonder why? Why did God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden? He said, don't eat from, you can eat from any of the other trees, but don't eat from this one because when you eat of it, you're going to bring death. Um, why? I guess the one wants to be like in heaven, where everybody has to follow God's rules. And it probably leads to a question of if uh, the angel Satan, he went against God's rules, knowing that the angels also had to do what like we do. Um, so that's the question. Um, so, um, you, so the question of why is the tree there? But let, let me answer that first part. So the the angels having free will, right? When God created them, uh, they had the ability to uh, worship God and obey God or not. Um, and every time they were obeying God, they were doing what was right. And and as soon as they said no, that was rebellion. And God says, all right, that's it. Um, God gave that me free will too, right? To to listen to him and obey him, or to choose not to. Uh, we'll, we'll talk in lesson four a little bit about, about where we're at right now because of sin, is that you know we don't have that ability without God's help to do the right, to choose God. We need to be, we're, but we'll get more into that. But yeah, so they had that free will, but then once they sinned, it said he bound them for judgment. So they... They were doomed, right? Um, and the good angels, the Bible tells us that now they are always seeing the face of God. So if they're always in God's presence, they they uh, are holy and they have to, you know. So so right now the angels are bound. They're either they're either rebellious and, and condemned, or uh, they are servants of God that can do nothing but serve God. So there's only two groups. Yes. Yeah. The now there are different. Uh, descriptions for different types of angels in the Bible talks about different ranks of angels, maybe archangels and the angels. Yeah, they're bound. Sure, I'm sure. or but bound they're, one way. Yeah, but they're bound one way or another. So the angels no longer have free will as they had at the beginning. Uh, Adam and Eve had free will, and of course they, they chose to sin. So now back to that question why did God give them the opportunity to sin? Can you please say what you just said again? Uh, which part? About the angels and free will. So when, when the angels were created, they obviously had the, the free will to either obey or rebel, because some, some rebel. And then God says, okay, you rebelled, you are bound for destruction, right? So you're, their chance is done. So the devil. And what time did they rebel in this time frame? So yeah, so sometime between when God created everything and says it's good, and when we see Satan tempting Eve in the garden. Now, we don't know how long that was. Uh, was that years? Was that months? 
I kind of like personally, the Bible doesn't say it, but, but personally, I always want to be really clear when I'm saying, okay, this is just something that I'm thinking based on this. You know, the Bible doesn't say specifically how long it was, but I kind of think it was a relatively short amount of time that God had also told them to be fruitful and increase in number. And they haven't had any kids yet. But again, I mean, that's it's all God can do whatever. So I'm thinking it was a relatively short amount of time in which this rebellion took place. And then Satan is, is tempting me. And then, but Job says that when the angels came before the Lord, Satan was with them. Yeah, so, so the second time before the Lord, and he, 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 so, so the, uh, you know, when, when they are involved, uh, Satan is, his eternity is, he's, he's bound for destruction, right? On the last day, uh, he will be, I don't know, trapped in hell forever, and I'll be going to describe it. Uh, now, God gives him the ability to roam the earth, to attempt to, uh, and, and part of that, though, is he still has to answer God. You know, with this situation of Job that you described, I don't know if everybody's familiar with that story, but, but Job had, had everything, and, and Satan says, oh, he's only believing because you've been so good to him. And uh, God says, all right, you can test that, um, but you can't touch his heart. Uh, and then Satan's like, oh, you can't touch his health, right? So uh, you can take anything you want from him, and, and that all happened. Uh, but he says, you can't touch his health. And then Satan comes back and says, yeah, but he's still got his health, so that's why he still loves you. And God says, okay, you can take that too, but you can't kill him. You know, so God is putting these restrictions on him, uh, on Satan, and what he allows him to do. And so one of the things, you know, one of the questions, why does God allow Satan to tempt them. Why did God put that tree in the garden? Um, to, see to see if they're going to remain faithful. To see if they're going to remain faithful. Excellent. Now the question is, didn't he know? He's God, so he knows all things. I would say, is, is he desired to stay in this? Okay. I say to be covered in Okay. okay. So, so, okay. So, um, our first house in Georgia was a split foyer, and the lower level was so we we bought the house. You know, I've been called to start the church, but we had you know we had no place. We were renting a, a school for worship and all of that, and so kind of the office and any meetings or whatever was happening at my house. And the lower level, we said, okay, that's going to be church and then the two bedrooms upstairs that's, that's where we'll hang out so my office was in the, in the lower level my son came home from kindergarten and uh, um, came in through the garage and opened up that door and he could see me in my office um, and so I'm going to paint two scenarios so this kindergartner walks in the door scenario one I say okay Andrew you get in here right now, you give me a hug, you tell me you love me, otherwise I'm taking away all your toys, you're not going to get any supper and you're going to bed right now. So he comes in, he gives me a hug, says he loves me. Scenario number two, he walks in the door, I'm working away at my computer, uh, he comes in, gives me a hug, tells me he loves me. Uh, and there were no threats that are in the room, he, that he chose to do that. Which one is, is actually love? This guy, right? Um, it, it, he, he did something. If, if I have no other option but to do something, uh, there, it, that's not based on a relationship then, right? God created us for a relationship. You know, in, in, uh, when, when God created uh, Adam and Eve, remember, he, it, it says uh, uh, he had created everything, and everything was good, but then he looks at Adam and he says it's not good. Not that there's anything wrong with Adam, but he says it's not good that he's alone. Yeah. I'm making a helper suitable, right? And, and so that he makes even this. God created us for a relationship. We are incomplete without a relationship. And not just relationship with one another. He created us for a relationship with him. We talked about that a little bit last time, right? Where our hearts are restless, O Lord, until they find rest in you, that, that whole section. Um, and so in order to have a relationship with him, if we were just robots, 
Um, that's not love. And God is love. How do I show love to someone? Well, a sacrifice. Right? That's a big part of what, what love is. It's not just a feeling. It's, it's that activity. It's that, that willingness to sacrifice. God so loved us that he, he sacrificed. Right? He, sent, he gave us one more son. Um, so God gives them everything. They had no needs that weren't being met. But he says, here's, here's a tree. Don't eat from that one. Um, sacrifice doing that to show me love me. And so now every time they walk past that tree, yeah, and, and they say, well, um, God said don't, so I don't want to because I love God. Uh, to eat from it, what is that saying? That's saying, I don't care what you said, God. I, or I don't trust you. Let's look at the temptation in Genesis 3, 4 to 6. Whose turn did you just read for that? So, Kat, you want to read Genesis 3, 4 to 6? Sure. Sure. You will not surely, <laughs> the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Okay, thank you. Um, notice, man, the, the devil's sly, right? Uh, what, what's, his, what's his first temptation here? What, what was the, the first attack? What is she in? Uh, what's that? She won't die. Yeah, he won't surely die. So what's he saying? God's lying, mm -hmm. right? So don't trust God. And uh, um, then... He comes with another another swing. What's what's the sum that up? Folks in the world. Folks in the world to get them the club. Okay. Yeah, you when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God knowing good and evil. Was, was that true? No, he's saying again that God's lying. Yeah. Now there's a, a slip. A sliver of truth. They didn't know evil yet, right? Yeah. Um, so that, but, but he is completely twisting it, right? Um, and, and acting like God's lying in this. Uh, they didn't know evil, and that was good, right? It, it, that was better for them. So really, what's this thing? God doesn't have your best interest in mind, right? Um, you know, you, you think of the teenager who wants to go to the party and the parents know something about whatever's happening at that party and they say, no, you can't go to that party. Mom, you hate me. Um, no, no. And you know, what, what Satan's saying, if only you went to this party, if only you did this, then you would have a more full life. Then you, And he doesn't stop at teenagers, right? Um, if only you take this shortcut on your taxes or you, you don't quite do this that you're supposed to or you do something that well, it'll feel good, even though you know you're not supposed to. Then you'll really be living. Then you'll be happy. Um, lies. Yeah, sometimes the, the, the sinful nature does enjoy sin. Uh, it might feel good for a moment, but um, it is not good. And, yeah, it, it's also... So, so since, since God knows everything, he knew ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not just knowing at the moment. Right. It's knowing through all time outside. Yeah, the he's time. eternal. He's already been so, able to see it. Yep. So he's trying to prove a point to I, I think he's trying to prove a point to us. You know, this is one thing that you'll probably hear me say it sometimes during the course of this uh, these lessons. But anytime you ask a question uh, that starts with why did God blank, whatever it is. Why did God put the tree in the garden? Why does God let this evil thing happen? Why does God, whatever it is, the answer is always because he loves us. Because he says he's working all things for our good. He says that he loves us. The answer is always because he loves us. So now we just got to figure out how is this love? So why does God um, allow them to have an opportunity to sin? Because he loves them and wants them to be able to have a relationship with him. Why did he do it even though, so this is an interior question, why did he do it even though he knew that they were going to sin, they were going to fall? Why did he protect them from that? Well, he wanted them to have a full relationship with him, um, not just one that 
you know, because he could have prevented them from ever doing anything wrong. So he couldn't have a poor relationship with the angels because they didn't have uh, a choice or redemption. They only were bound or not bound. And the next creation had the opportunity for forgiveness. So now if I am bad, I can repent and come back, but the angels can't repent. Yeah, so and, and that, that, right? that comes to, let me tweak it a little bit. That comes to the difference between the angels and humans. The angels were created as servants. The humans were created as the crown of God's creation, the apple of his eye, right? He, he created us for the relationship. He created the angels to serve those that he would have the relationship. And the angels don't have a second chance. Right, right. Because their, their purpose was to be servants, and if they fail, yeah, but if, the, you know, whereas our purpose was to have a relationship with God. And um, have you ever had, uh, I don't know, whether it's with a, a spouse or or a friend, um, you know, guys that come back from the military who have been through junk with the guys that have been by their side, there are very few relationships that are tighter than those, right? Exactly. The brothers, uh, because of what they've been through. A husband and wife, that go through uh, this loss or that loss or whatever else, or, or the you know just the difficulties of life, um, their relationship is stronger. As long as Satan doesn't get in and break them up, their relationship is stronger on the other side. Right? You know, you think on your wedding day, you think you love this person so much, and I can never love this person more. Um, and then you go through some junk. And God uses that person to be someone for, you know, that, that strength that you never, it's stronger on the other side of it. God uh, wanted a, a relationship that was real love and not just, not just. Um, so the tree was put there for relationship building? So the tree was put there, I think, you know, someone said it, it, it was a test, right? But it wasn't a test because God didn't know. It was a test uh, to teach us something about ourselves, to teach Adam and Eve something about themselves, um, that they that loving that they wanted to love God. Um, and when they did, when, when Satan said, no, it would be better not to love and obey God, to do what God wants, not to put him first, um, they could see what happens then. And then when God comes and says, I'm going to fix this, and instead of destroying you like I should, Right? Um, death is still in the world now, right? And so there's going to be, you know, he gives all the, the, the uh, women will have pain in childbirth and, and you know, we'll, the workers will sow and reap by the sweat of their brow, right? It's not going to be easy. And there's going to be conflict and strife and whatever else. Um, there's, there's consequences and eventually we die, which again is actually a good thing because then we get out of this life with all the problems and we get to be in an eternal life with him forever, you know, who believe in him get, get that. So what is the mix of true fruit? Not just you're this way and Satan's this way. Why not say that again? And then, why does someone so tree of the fruit instead of something else? Yeah, just take that out and just make them already knowing good and evil. Because there's no choice. Yeah. And then they're like, dang. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, this is it. So he's questioning. It may be the, the answer to question now. Okay. So, what or how was sin or evil born or created if God created all of us to be happy, yep. holy, and loving? And he, he created us because he loves us. He created us with free will. He created the angels with free will. And then some of them rebelled. Um, but we never, we never knew what evil was. I mean, he created us. He had free will, but he created us out of love. Yep. And never said anything else about that love. Yeah. So, how can, we, how can love go from, how can we go from love regardless if we got our own uh, lives or what we're trying to do? Yep. How can we go from love to, to, to make something that's not even in his uh, vocabulary? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, so often sin is not choosing of something that's bad, but choosing something good more than God. 
You know what I mean? So like uh, I can sin by uh, by loving my family. Right? And I said, I don't spend time with my family, so we're gonna go on a trip and we're gonna do this and this and this. And and I I, I put that ahead of that relationship with God. And in, in turn, I'm actually hurting my family because they need a dad who's who's got a good relationship with God and all of that. But is my family a bad thing? No. It's just that I put them ahead of uh, the, the greater good. Uh, and so it's a matter of how we handle the good things. And yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a, a, a wonderful question because, you know, why did, why didn't Satan, you know, the, the angel that was going to rebel, you know, Satan, didn't he know that God was awesome? Obviously, right? But he chose, hey, I see. I've been made as something pretty special too. Uh, I'm going to put me first over over listening to God. Um, and there you get people, and then he's like, "Oh, wait a second, now I'm bound. I want to get other people um, mess with that too." You know, and, and yeah, does that help? Does that answer your question? I think just this area, I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it is, it is. It's deep, right? You never thought that Genesis 3, um, you know, it's such a simple story. You're like, wait a second. Once you start digging into it a little bit, you see, and you just, and God did that knowing what it would cost him. Why? Because he loves me. He wants, he wants me, he wants you to be with him forever in heaven. And so he was willing to, first of all, be rebelled against, and, and then to know that the only way to solve that is to sacrifice, to give up his own son. Um, and that, and we'll get into that more. We are at one o'clock. So that was a quick hour because you had some really good questions. Um, and, and next time we'll do the, the rest of this lessons. The first three lessons are long. Um, four, five, and six are much shorter. So we usually catch up in there. Uh, and I don't worry about, uh, about you know, racing to get through because I don't want to, Short circuit any of the discussion or any of the questions. So, do we read Romans 5 12? Did we read that one? Um, I don't think we read it yet. You want to read it before we close up? Now, therefore, just as in the world to one man and death to one man, and in this way, death came to all men because all sin. Yeah. Just trying to mark the mark. Yep. So, there's uh, Adam sin. And it brought sin on us. We'll, we'll close out that with those with the consequences part, and then we'll get into the law and gospel next time. Um, and this time, I, uh, my brother's got a flight he's got to catch. So I'm, if there's any questions afterward, I'm going to take off to Vicar because I do have to fly, fly I have to drive uh, to get my brother to the airport um, so that he doesn't miss his flight. But thank you for being here, and, and we'll pick it up again next week at noon, same room, and I'll have our our guy look at that to make sure that it's uh it feels like it warmed up a little in here no maybe what's that more than last weekend okay yeah so that's not working like it should but uh but we'll uh we'll make sure it's comfortable in here next time apologize for that let's close with prayer lord god thank you for giving us this time in your word and thank you for loving us enough to to make us and even though you knew what what it would cost you uh, help us to appreciate the forgiveness that you give us and to keep studying your word that we grow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.